vote. And let's organize to get others to vote with us. You can help make this happen by texting vote to 30330. We know how important it is that we elect real leaders like Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, people of honor and integrity who hold justice close to their hearts and believe that the lives of my four black children matter. In the words of womanist poet Audre Lorde, your silence will not protect you. Congressman Lewis would not be silenced, and neither can we. We cannot wait for some other time, some other place, some other heroes. We must be the heroes of our generation because we too are America. Our votes can be our voice. There's something deep down within me, moving me, that I could no longer be satisfied or go along with an evil system. Life was extremely dangerous when we were growing up. John Lewis had the respect of everybody because he was the one who demonstrated the most courage. He'd been beaten and knocked down and get up and go to find another battle. John was focused on ending voter suppression and it wasn't that he was a great orator, it's that he was a great spirit. The power of spirituality and humility and the willingness to suffer rather than to inflict suffering. One of the things that John has taught us is that, yeah, you may have to sacrifice, but if you're sacrificing for a cause, something bigger than you, bigger than you, and you really believe in it, then you will have people following you. We do not get meaningful legislation out of this Congress. We will march through the South, through the streets of Jackson, through the streets of Danville, through the streets of Cambridge, through the streets of I think he is the singular figure that has tried to carry out the work of our nonviolent campaigns into the halls of Congress. From day one, John Lewis was a role model for the members of Congress, whether they were freshmen or here a long time, because he brought with him a kind of heft, a weightiness of, of purpose. I got arrested a few times during the 60s. <laughs> 40 times. And since I've been in Congress, another five times. The means by which we struggle must be consistent with the end we seek. Someone who has navigated thorny issues of policy, not by castigating alone, but by also encouraging people to be better than they think they can be. Today, we are considering a fair housing measure which not only protects our nation's minorities, but it protects the needs of those with disabilities and families with children. How long do we have to wait before we decide to ban assault weapons? We have another opportunity to bring more of our citizens into political participation. I have on my marching shoes. That's right. I'm fired up. I'm ready to march. And all of these decades later, while he and others of his generation achieved much, we're still fighting against police brutality and fighting for our voting rights. And so we best honor him by continuing to fight the good fights that he fought, by staying in good trouble. Through the 
the thunder and the rain together all the struggle and the pain together can't you see we are the same our freedom can't wait another day so together let's fight fight, fight for what's right We will create a beloved community. We will redeem the soul of America. As a nation and as a people, we will get there. We'll climb to the mountain top, and one day we'll win together. One day, when the glory comes, it will be ours, it will be ours Oh, one day when the war is won We will be sure, we will be sure Oh, glory To the heavens, no man, no weapon formed against. Yes, glory is destined. Every day, women and men become legends. Sins that go against our skin become blessings. The movement is a rhythm to us. Freedom is like religion to us. Justice is juxtaposition in us. Justice for all just ain't specific enough. One son died, his spirit is revisiting us. True and living, living in us. Resistance is us. That's why Rosa sat on the bus. That's why we walk through America with our hands up. When it go down, we woman and man up. They say stay down and we stand up. Shots we on the ground, the camera panned up. King pointed to the mountaintop and we ran up. One day, when the glory comes, it will be ours, it will be ours. Oh, one day, when the war is won, we will be sure, we will be sure.
Wow, that was so beautiful, John and Common. Wow. Joe Biden shares John Lewis's belief that every vote matters. Personally, I plan to follow the example of six current cabinet members, Vice President Poonce and President Trump himself, and vote by mail. To find out everything you need to know about mail-in ballots, your polling place, or even just am I registered, text VOTE to 30330. 30330. That would be the president's golf score if he didn't cheat. Okay, look, I'll admit that was a little nasty, but we all know he's a cheater. And I'm proud to be a nasty, nasty woman. You know, when Donald Trump spoke at his inauguration about American carnage, I assumed that was something he was against, not a campaign promise. What we need now is great leadership, someone experienced and hardworking and intelligent, someone who understands the soul of the American people. I'm historian John Meacham. In his final Sunday sermon, days before his death, Martin Luther King Jr. said, we are tied together in the single garment of destiny. This is the way God's universe is made. This is the way it is structured. A single garment of destiny. We the people cannot escape that reality. Nor, as Lincoln taught us, can you and I escape history. And we shouldn't want to, for many of us have been given much. Liberty, opportunity, a sense of possibility. The task of our time is to make sure those gifts are available not just to folks who look like me, but to all of us. This is a grave moment in America. A deadly virus is ravaging us. Our jobs are evaporating. Our faith in the things that bind us together is fraying, for our democracy is under assault from an incumbent more interested in himself than he is in the rest of us. Extremism, nativism, isolationism, and a lack of economic opportunity for working people are all preventing us from realizing our nation's promise. And so we must decide whether we will continue to be prisoners of the darkest of American forces, or will we free ourselves to write a brighter, better, nobler story? That's the issue of this election, a choice that goes straight to the nature of the soul of America. Humankind has long viewed the soul as the vital center, the core, the essence of existence. The soul is what makes us, us. In its finest hours, America's soul has been animated by the proposition that we are all created equal and by the imperative to ensure that we are treated equally. Yet America is a mix of light and shadow. Seneca Falls and Selma and Stonewall dwell in the American soul, but so do the impulses that have given us slavery, segregation, and systemic discrimination. Often, we'd prefer to hear the trumpets rather than face the tragedies. But an honest accounting of who we've been can enable us to see who we should be, a country driven by the best parts of our soul, not by the worst, a country informed by reason and candor, not by ego and lies, a country that's big-hearted, not narrow-minded, the struggle to be who we ought to be is difficult, demanding, and ongoing. Justice can be elusive, and change in America has been painful and provisional. The Civil War led to segregation, the New Deal to right-wing reaction, civil rights to white backlash. Yet history, which will surely be our judge, can also be our guide. From Harriet Tubman to Alice Paul to John Lewis, from the beaches of Normandy to the rending of the Iron Curtain, our story has soared when we've built bridges, not walls, when we've lent a hand, not when we've pointed fingers, when we've hoped, not feared. If we live in hope, we open our souls to the power of love. We've been taught to love our neighbors as ourselves. As individuals and as a nation, however, we fail at following that commandment more often than we succeed. But when we fail, we must try again and again and again, for only in trial is progress possible. 
from Jamestown forward. Our story has become fuller and fairer because of people who share a conviction that Dr. King articulated on that Sunday half a century ago. The arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. Bending that arc requires all of us. It requires we the people. And it requires a president of the United States with empathy, grace, a big heart, and an open mind. Joe Biden will be such a president. With our voices and our votes, let us now write the next chapter of the American story, one of hope, of love, of justice. If we do so, we might just save our country and our souls. Good evening, I'm Congresswoman Deb Holland. I'm grateful to be with you here on Indigenous land. The promise of this country is older than our Constitution. Over 500 years ago, thousands of Indian tribes were vibrant democratic societies with rich cultures and traditions and communities that had sustained them for millennia on lands they loved and respected. My people, the Pueblo Indians, migrated to the Rio Grande Valley in the late 1200s to escape droughts. We were led to the Great River and its tributaries, where we established an agricultural tradition that continues to this day. My people survived centuries of slavery, genocide, and brutal assimilation policies. But throughout our past, tribal nations have fought for and helped build this country. There were those like my Laguna grandparents who worked on our country's railroad, and those like my mother, a Navy veteran, who served this country with honor. I stand here today, a proud 35th generation New Mexican and one of the first Native American women ever elected to Congress. I'm a symbol of our resilience as the embodiment of America's progress as a nation. I know we can't take our democracy for granted, especially now as people are dying, as our land is abused, as our constitution is under attack. We must work for it by getting involved, by registering voters, by voting. Voting is sacred. My people know that. We weren't universally granted the right to vote until 1962, and that fundamental right is more important than ever. Whether your ancestors have been here for hundreds of years or you're a new citizen, know this. Whether we vote and how we vote will determine if our nation's promise of social, racial, and environmental justice will outlast us. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris respect our past and understand our present. They will see us through this crisis of leadership that is plaguing our country, and they will help us to build a better future. Thank you. The first year that I voted was 1974. 1967. I have not missed a general or a primary election in my 51 year voting history. Now I don't go to the polls anymore. The U.S. Postal Service does it for me. And now we're seeing our current president sabotage our right to vote, sabotaging democracy by trying to undo the postal system. My father worked for the Postal Service for 30 years. My mother worked for that local post office for 10 years. That job enabled her to feed her family. I am appalled at what the Republicans and the president are trying to do to subvert the vote. Nothing or no one will stop me from voting this election. We need to keep our mail system. We need Joe Biden. Where are they going? Where are these ballots going? Who's getting them? Who is not getting them? A little section that's Republican. Will they be stolen from mailboxes as they get put in by the mailman? Will they be taken from the mailmen and the male women? Will they be forged? Who is signing them? Who's signing them? What are they signed at a kitchen table and sent in? Will they be counterfeited by groups inside our nation? Will they be counterfeited 
maybe by the millions by foreign powers. Let me put this in my own words. I've heard Donald Trump say some pretty unhinged things. I've heard them over and over and over again. But nothing is more dangerous to our democracy than his attacks on mail-in voting during a pandemic. Okay, here's the truth. Donald Trump doesn't want any of us to vote because he knows he can't win fair and square. So whether you plan to vote by mail or in person wearing your mask, it is your vote and it's your right. Don't let Donald Trump take that away from you. For accurate, up-to-date voting information that you can trust, text VOTE to 30330. One more time, text VOTE to 30330. I'm Alex Padilla, California Secretary of State. And I'm Jocelyn Benson, the Secretary of State of Michigan. Voting is the oxygen of our democracy. It decides elections, and elections change lives. That's why we've seen so many attacks on our right to vote, including many that specifically target working families, young people, and communities of color. Secretaries of state are responsible for running fair, accessible, secure elections where every vote is counted and every voice is heard. We serve on the front lines defending our democracy against any and all attacks, foreign and domestic. So let's talk about this election. Despite what he says, Donald Trump can't cancel it. But he and Republicans are making it too hard for so many to cast their ballots. And now he's attacking vote by mail to distract and confuse voters. And let's be clear, there is absolutely zero difference between voting by mail and voting absentee. Millions of Americans have been voting absentee for decades. Donald Trump, his family, his staff, they all vote by mail. In fact, in states like Colorado, Utah, and Oregon, voters have been voting by mail for years. Republicans and Democrats agree it is safe. But now Trump has admitted he's trying to sabotage the post office to undermine voting by mail. And we're not going to let him do that. Our job is to make sure everyone can vote safely, whether in person or by mail. And your job is to make sure you vote. And there's more. Once you've done that, talk to your friends and neighbors. Spread the word. Tell everyone you know to text VOTE to 30330 for more voting options. If you're planning to vote from home, request and return your ballot early. And remind everyone you know to make a plan to vote. Don't let anyone keep you from exercising your most sacred right. Make your plan to vote. Grab your mask and head to the polls the first day they're open or request your ballot and send it in right away. And know this, election results may take a little longer this year, but Democrats will fight to make sure your ballot is counted. Because at the end of the day, the biggest role in preserving our democracy isn't ours, it's yours. Our family has a crazy history uh, with America and it all starts with um, it being a beacon for, for immigrants. It's really cool being like part Polish and part Puerto Rican and also part black because I get to, you know, for me personally, I get to be this like melting pot of America. If you were an immigrant back then, come from an immigrant family, the Democrats brought you in. We are in danger of losing the meaning of this country. Every generation before us has had to fight for what they believe in and it's just our turn now. I was so proud when I saw the uh, demonstrations that were going on across the country. This year's election means a lot to me because I feel like our generation is so motivated right now to make a difference. There's a lot of changes that we have to make and I'm counting on Joe Biden and I believe in him. I'm here because a union job lifted my family out of poverty and into the middle class. My grandfather left the Jim Crow South for Detroit, joined the UAW, and got a job on the assembly lines during World War II. That union job enabled him to support his family, raise my mom, and send her to Fisk University. That's the American dream. Together we work, together we rise. 
Joe Biden and Kamala Harris know the dignity of all working Americans. They know the urgency and the demand of our dream. But working people are under attack. The wealth gap grows, our middle class shrinks, and poverty persists. Last week, Donald Trump said, and I quote, our economy is doing good. While 40 million Americans are at risk of losing their homes, 30 million aren't getting enough to eat, and 5.4 million people have lost their health care because of this crisis. He has failed us. But still, I believe in the dream of our ancestors. Together with Joe and Kamala in the White House, we'll raise the minimum wage so no one who works a full-time job in America lives in poverty. Together, we'll fight for those who keep us healthy, who keep us safe, who teach our children. We'll stand for those who cook and serve and clean, who plant and harvest, who pack and always those who deliver, whose hands are thick with calluses, like my granddad's were, who lifted me high, who held mine when I was a boy. If he was alive, Joe and Kamala, he would be so proud of you. And he'd tell us, Take another by the hand and another and let's get to work. This dream ain't free. You got to work for it. So like his generation, up and out of the depression, let's now work together and stand together. And America, together, we will rise. This is my team. You guys hey, build America, right. not Wall Street. You just build America. That's right. The Americans just want to live meekly, comfortable. I've got a wife that works as well. We've got a 17 and a seven-year-old at home, and, and and we're still working. You know, thanks to our international executive board for getting with General Motors and making sure that it's safe for us to return back to work after eight weeks of being laid off. I mean, it, it's it's a hoax at one point, and now here we are, full blown. Yep. Well, I tell you what, the future of auto workers in America, and I really believe this can be as bright as it was back in the, in, in, in the late 40s and 50s. Yes. Simple reason. It's an iconic industry. It's an American industry. We made it. We made it. Yes. Thank you. It's been a very interesting 2020. I've been in the fire service 16 years and never experienced anything like COVID. Uh, we had to change our whole tactics, the way we did our day to day. And now at a hurricane that just came in two weeks ago, and we were right almost right on the eye. And, I mean, we were doing things we never thought we'd be doing. Uh, water rescues in, with masks on, having to worry about COVID. It, it, was, it was interesting. How's your family doing? Well, I'm a single dad. I have a almost five-year-old who's in my world. And I'm very lucky that my parents are retired. My mom actually retired right after my daughter was born to help us with her. And she was so looking forward to pre-K, going to the big school, like she says. And then unfortunately, all this COVID came in and now it's all gonna be online schooling, which I'm fortunate, I have my parents, but I do have a lot of guys that are double income families and they're just trying to figure out how they're gonna do it with their kids. What, how, what arrangements are they gonna have to make since they're not gonna be going to school, it's gonna be online. It's two people in my household. Um, I have a family of two and we have grown up kids that are no longer in the household. But it takes two people to build. Uh, we have an ongoing goal of a, a five-year goal of buying a house in the next five years. So um, hopefully we'll save, save, save. Look, everybody, you talked about the middle class. The fact is that the way middle class people generate wealth overwhelmingly is building up equity in their home. And that's what gets passed on from one generation to the next, the equity in a home. You know, the middle class is continuously taking hits, and one of the reasons why we're on this call is we realize how important it is to have you in the White House. We, uh, we need a comprehensive energy policy for renewable resources, which I know you have one. And if we're going to build the middle class, it's about the jobs. The future really rests on investment. We're going to be investing $2 trillion in infrastructure, ports, bridges, highways, making sure that we have access to do things that really make a difference. 
like what you're doing that solar facility outside of Harrisburg. You know, I'm a Scranton boy. You know, Central Pennsylvania is okay, but you know, Northeast. <laughs> <laughs> so keep the faith, guys. Right. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, thank, you, you, thank so you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know it's not typical for a former Surgeon General to speak at a convention. Surgeons General are appointed by presidents, but our work isn't about politics. Our highest duty is to the public, our true guide is science, and our job is to speak the truth about public health, even when it's controversial or perceived as political. So here's the truth. Our nation absolutely has what it takes to overcome the COVID-19 pandemic that's claimed tens of thousands of our loved ones. We have the talent, resources, and technology. What we're missing is leadership. We need a leader who works with states to ensure that everyone who needs a test gets one and gets results quickly. A leader who secures a safe, effective vaccine and distributes it quickly and fairly. A leader who inspires us to practice distancing and wear masks not as a political statement, but as a patriotic duty, a commitment we make to one another. That's why I'm here tonight, not because of politics or for party, but because I know Joe Biden can be that leader. I've worked with Joe Biden. I've seen who he is with no cameras around, how he sits with people in their pain and holds them in his heart, how he pours over COVID briefings, asking smart questions, letting science guide his way, just as he did when managing the Ebola crisis. And six years ago, when Joe Biden met my family, many of them immigrants, awed to be in the nation's capital, I saw how he kneeled beside my grandmother's wheelchair, took her hands in his, and said, thank you for choosing us, the United States of America, as the place to trust with your family. Tonight, as a father, son, and grandson, as a doctor who swore an oath, and as an American who loves my country, I can tell you that Joe Biden is the man I trust to look out for my family and the leader I know will heal this nation. Hi, I'm Senator Tammy Baldwin. When I was nine years old, I got sick, really sick. I was hospitalized but since my grandparents were the ones raising me and our family's health plan didn't cover grandkids, they were forced to pay out of pocket for my three-month hospital stay. I got better, but the insurance companies didn't. They refused to cover me at any cost because I was marked child with a pre-existing condition. We all have stories like this, stories about a time when the system was rigged against us, when we were counted out, left out, pushed out. Just think of what we've heard these past four days. Healthcare professionals who don't have the protective gear they need. Young people whose asthma will get worse as our air quality does. Workers who are afraid of losing their jobs. Each story begs this simple, fundamental question, a question that gets to the heart of the choice in this election. What kind of country do we want to be? Do we want to be a country where millionaires get to dodge taxes or one where working families get a break? Do we want to be a country where medical bills bury people in debt or one where health care is affordable for all? Or where tens of thousands of people die from a virus? Or where the American dream lives? I think we know the answer to that fundamental question because most of us want the same things. Good schools in our neighborhoods, racial justice, the freedom to love who we want, dignity in our work, and an economy where small businesses and working families thrive. And over the past months, we've added another to that list, a nation free from COVID. That's why Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are the only answer in this election. Trust me, they are. You see, there's another part of my story, 
the part where I ran for office, the part where I served in Congress, the part where I worked with Joe Biden and Barack Obama to make sure kids and grandkids, if they're dependents, can stay on their parents' health insurance until they're 26. We got that done. And yes, it was a big effing deal. That's the America I know. That's the America I love. And that's the America we will be with Joe Biden and Kamala Harris in the White House. A nation that plans, a nation that builds, a nation that builds back. Say it with me there at home, a nation that builds back better. Here in Wisconsin, our state motto is just one word, forward. This November, let's move forward and never look back. Thank you. No other nation, no other nation can match us if we step up. If we lead by the power of our example, not by the example of our power. The only thing that can tear America apart is America itself, and we cannot let that happen. If you want to help Joe and Kamala make sure.